Now, in any control problem, there is a just like in, in analog control, you have an open loop plant and you have a closed loop plant. So, you have a plant by itself, which is called uncontrolled or open loop. And you also have a closed loop plant, which is controlled. So, you know, the controlled plant is actually has does not exhibit the all possible behavior of the of the open loop plant, but exists but exhibits only a certain subset. So there are so that's the job of the controller. So we have to specify when we when we if we are talking about the controller design problem, then we there are two things that we have to do. The first thing is that we have to say what this system does by itself, what it is capable of doing, what it is capable of doing that we can get from its model. Then we have to give a specification that is of all these behavior, we do not want certain cert, some behavior. So, we want only some of them. So, what is the behavior that we want for the controlled system? That is called the specification. So, this, these specifications could be again stated in various ways, for example, by transient transition event sequences, which could be either timed or untimed or by you know saying that giving the enabling conditions for some transitions that is we, we may like to cause some transitions in in certain ways in the system. So, in various ways system specification will be given and then the job of the controller design is to ensure that this system actually behaves like the specification system that is the problem of discrete event or logic or sequence control. So, seems a bit abstract perhaps. So, let us see an example. So, in our old example, what are the what are the external inputs? So, depends on what you have. You have I, I mean, you actually have to see. So, maybe that you have in, in this system, we may assume that it, it has a it, it has three external inputs. One is the up solenoid another is a down solenoid and the third one is a is a master control switch. So, these are the three input variables, they are all external, external to the system. Uh, and each one of them, for example, the up solenoid and the down solenoid may be, uh, may take two values, either 0 or 1. Uh, so, what, what could be outputs? For example, we could say that corresponding to limit switches, we have some lamps. So, whenever a limit switch is made, we have an up lamp or and a, and a down lamp. So, they are like indicators. So, corresponding to the limit switches, we are having some outputs, up lamp and down lamp. Similarly, the machine we assume is existing in three kinds of states, you know, basically they are the motion states of the, of the um, of the system. So, they it, so the system could either be in the idle mode in which it is doing nothing, it is not in the active mode or among, so we can say that this, this where, whenever the master control switch is 1, what is the effect of this external input that it will make the system from the idle to any one of these and if it is off, then from these any one of these it will actually come to the idle state. This is what we, we are, we are trying to describe the behavior of the system. So, otherwise among the active states, the system could be either in move up, moving up. So, it is moving up, it is neither up nor down, it is, it is the position of the press is neither up nor down, uh, neither down nor up. It is somewhere in the middle, but it is moving up. Similarly, it could be moving down or it could be not moving, but it is in the up position or in the down position. So, we have chosen to, to model the system in such a manner. So, we assume that the system goes through such states. Now, now state changes, what are the, what are the typical state changes, changes in the system? For example, we say that the, the, the external inputs are MCS, up solenoid and down solenoid. So, if MCS is, is exercise system comes from idle to any one of these. Maybe it comes from idle to down. And 
if the up solenoid is pressed and if the system is in, is in the down state, from there if the up solenoid state, uh, input is exerted, then it will go from the down state to the moving up state. So, he, these are cases where a state change is caused by an input, we will we'll, we'll present it draw a diagram. Similarly, internal diagram, for example, let us let's, let's, let's draw this diagram. So, uh, so the system we are saying exists in five states. Okay. So, maybe this is up. This is down, this is moving up, and this is moving down. And somewhere here you have idle. So, when you get, so how does the system change states? So, you have from idle to down, when, when MCS equal to 1, you are trying to describe the system behavior. And then from down, if you give a give an up solenoid, then it goes to the moving up state. From there, by internal dynamics, after some time, it will go to the up state. In the up state, if you give it a down solenoid equal to 1 input, then it will be moving down state. And then by itself it will come to the down state, right. In between uh, sometimes you know self loops that is you can you can write that in between if moving down is in this position it will it will be in the moving down state because it might take quite some time to for it to come down from up to down state. So and then we can say that from anywhere if you go to moving up, then it goes to idle. If, if, if MCS becomes 0 at any point of time, then it is, it goes to the idle state. So, you know that we are, we are basically graphically, we are, we are describing the, how the system goes from one state to another because of various external inputs or because of internal dynamics, okay. And similarly, we can say that, for example, we can have we can have the various outputs. So, we, if we have we have the two outputs, so here we'll have down lamp is equal to one and up lamp is equal to zero. Similarly, here we have DL equal to zero and UL equal to zero. Both are zero. Here UL equal to one and DL equal to zero. So, these are the outputs. So, at, at the various states, these are the outputs which are actually exercised and which may be also which may also be sensed by the sensor for the purpose of the controller. Now, this is the behavior of the intrinsic plant. So, now one has to ensure, one has to ensure somehow that the specification that you give for the system that is actually first up solenoid e is exercised and it is held till it goes to the up state and then when it goes to the up state then 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 the down solenoid is exercised so this actually this is the this is this is the desirable cycle of the of the machine so one has to exercise some device has to actually compute this when to apply this up solenoid and when to apply this down solenoid and it is the controller which is going to do that so Right. Similarly, as, as we say that events are caused by state changes because this we have already, ex for example, in, in moving up, up lamp is equal to 0. When there is a state change from moving up to up, up lamp becomes 1. So, state changes also cause outputs. And a system specification, as we said, that the what is the objective of the machine? The objective of the machine is that when the control switch is on, 
at that time it must come down go up come down go up this it must do a certain number of times till the mcs switch is put off if this mcs switch is put off immediately it from there it must go to the idle state which we can describe what is the position of the place at that time whatever it is so this the system specification for this system could be an alternating sequence of up and down states so it must continuously go from up to down and down to up states so having done this example we can take a look at some basic differences between sequence control and analog so firstly the process variables in the sequence control are discrete valued in analog they are continuous valued the model as a consequence the model here is logical typically you know state transition kind of models while in analog control they are numerical so you use either differential equation or you use difference equation so use some equation with numerical equations similarly the signals generally the signals indicate some status so something is on off maybe a traffic light is either red or amber or green or we can we are interested in or there sometimes you know signals are in this case sequence of symbols so it goes from up down up down up down or maybe a maybe a conveyor for a buffer another part another part another part buffer empty another part another part so this these are you know sequences so another part is an event occurring whenever another part comes into the buffer and in between certain other event called buffer empty takes place so the signals by by signals we mean the sequence of these events in the case of sequence control on the other hand we know that in the case of analog controls we want to specify actual trajectories we want to specify properties of trajectories rise time should be less than something maximum overshoot should be less than something so what are we trying to say we are trying to say that uh, we, are, we are trying to describe some properties of the continuous trajectories in terms of their values while in uh, in the uh, sequence control we are interested in either status of, of some signals and their their sequences over time oops similarly if you look at control control here also can be open loop or closed loop closed loop control is possible even for even for uh, discrete event or logical control for example in our in our die press example we had those two limit switches so any controller that will work can take feedback of the state of the process using the limit switches and then decide the control input so in that sense uh, logic control can also be feedback control right but it is generally on off or or logical kind of control and they are generally supervisory in nature that is they are, they are used to uh, decide in many cases they are used to decide the command sequences which are again realized in term in turn by the automatic controllers right in the automatic controllers we could have linear or we could have non linear controllers and uh, i mean which are which are which are which are actually working at an working at an automatic control level one very interesting design is of course you know since you have so much simplified the the state space or the values that the, that i mean signals can take into 2 3 or 4 in codes i mean codes so so these so the models are much simpler so for example very very uh, linear non linear differential equations can then finite finally give rise to some you know 5 6 7 8 or maybe 20 state finite state machine which is a much simpler model compared to the compared to the non linear differential equation so generally design is uh, order of magnitude simil, uh, simpler than continuous automatic control designs one interesting thing is that tuning is generally not needed because the models are generally not physical they are actually you know abstract you know in information oriented models so unless you change the strategy of operating the plant uh, the it I mean, the controllers need not be tuned while in in the case of automatic control because you know systems system heat transfer coefficient will change pipes will develop uh, 
sludges inside uh, i mean uh, valve characteristics will change uh, reactor characteristics will change so therefore automatic controllers continuously require tuning from time to time but these sequence control controllers they generally do not require any training uh, any, any any tuning frequently because processes i mean till you do not have a different automatic control system which will take different inputs or you have want to change the whole operating mode of the process there is no tuning of the uh, sequence or logic control uh, law to change so now we have we have perhaps understood the the uh, discrete event control problem now uh, this this is not new it used to be this kind of problems have been handled in the industry long long time even before the even before the microprocessor uh, came into existence so previously what people used to do is that people used to use relays and contactors to actually realize this kind of logical functions you know so that's why previously such logical functions used to be called relay logic in fact the name relay logic diagram relay logic ladder these are uh, basically legacies of that past uh, which are still being um, still being used of course they are gradually getting changed and probably after 5 10 years relay, relay uh, ladder logic may not be uh, so relevant people will find other graphical and other ways of describing these programs but uh, it's a fact that PLCs have actually as they started to replace the relay logic and uh, so, so, so why they why they are better than relay logic that we can see. For example, relay logic is hardwired actually things are things are put relays contactors they are actually connected right while PLCs the logic is actually in a program. So, while if you want to change the logic little bit then you have to dismantle relay logic so at least some parts and then again install a new one while in the case of plc's because it's a microprocessor device all it takes is to change the program right therefore they, these are you know relay logic is actually difficult to upgrade and maintain while plc's are very modular you can just take out one and you can put it another put another you can all, all the time put you know uh, you can you, you can expand your system very easily you can put buy new input output modules you can then simply plug in plug them into the racks without any problems you know, these are much more uh, industry friendly to, to 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 upgrade and maintain real logic is obviously much more uh, limited in terms of size and complexity because you have to construct them using physical relays while in while plcs you can you can you can literally put i mean thousands and thousands of uh, such 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 logical functions merely in merely in computer memories so they are in terms of speed size complexity and even reliability they are they are beating their relay counter they have already beaten you know, no question of beating they are, they have already beaten their relay counterparts hands down so very old technology actually nowadays hardly anybody uses any it's in, uses it in fact all the time anywhere you go to any factory you will find tens of plcs all around so what is a plc what does it do we have understood that it's a actually you know i i i looked at the internet and uh, tried to locate some 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 definitions of the plc and these are some of the definitions which i found on the internet but somehow i didn't like them so 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 somebody says it's a solid state device designed to perform logic functions the solid state design device the term uh, is actually not very communicative because it again because it, it describes what everything is a solid state device even a even a small transistor is also a solid state device so solid state device designed to perform logical functions what previously accomplished by electromechanical relays this is something which mentions the history devices used for control operation and integration of manufacturing processes yes this is 
I, I like it more of manufacturing process equipment and machinery, but it still it does not say what kind of device these are. It, it is very cryptic on the device side. An assembly of digital logic elements, this word element is very confusing. What is meant by digital logic elements designed to make logical decisions? So, you know, designed to make logical decisions and provide outputs. So, I thought that I will find out my, my own, ex own definition. So, I am calling it an industrial computer. It is actually a computer which is used for industrial functions. What kind of functions? which will accept inputs from digital or analog sensors, which will execute logic for sequence control or analog control. In fact, modern PLCs in, in many, many cases also contain capabilities for doing analog controls on the same device. After all, it is a, it's a, it's a microprocessor. So, you can have several, it's, it's, it's speed is very high, it has a lot of memory. So, why not also once since you are buying a device, why not put the analog controls also? Otherwise, you will have to put buy another device just for analog controls. So, while logically they are different, physically speaking, one single PLC, you know, box can house even analog controllers. In fact, they do. They could drive actuators or, or indicators or they could communicate with other uh, computers. So, what are these components? These components are typical of, uh, of, a, of a computer. So, you can have, you know, the sort of, you know, the back plane or you can have a power supply or you can have uh, CPU memory or you, you have, you have I.O. cards. Various kinds of I.O. cards are used. So, you can, you can have digital or analog modules. You can have some special purpose function modules like you know high speed counters which 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 measure uh, you know shaft angle encoder uh, which measure rotational speeds or certain very fast and precise positioning commands can be uh, generation modules pwm generation modules etc so various kinds of cards it uses so obviously there's wiring and then you need two other separate devices with plc mainly for you know for, for, for interacting with it. One of them is a programmer using which you can download the PLC or you can see how variables are getting changed and the other is a man machine interface which can display some of the variables nicely so that people can see, see how things are being controlled. So, actually what I, what I we will make a, I, I have a little change of plan in this thing. We, since time is uh, nearly up, so, I would uh, skip the programming part in this lesson and then we will uh, include it in the next lesson. So, I am going to skip the next few slides and then come to the, come directly to the lesson review. Okay. So, so all these things will, 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 so we are going to see all these things in the next class which I thought I will include here but there is no time, okay. So, yeah. So, we have the lesson review. So, what have you seen? So, the, uh, in this lecture, we have primarily tried to impress upon you the nature of discrete event control problems. You know, the basically two things that there are some problems where analog controls are not required because they are too simple. If you start a motor for, for a conveyor, you do not need to control its speed. Just put full, vo full voltage, whatever speed it will rotate, let it rotate, conveyor will move. We are not interested in controlling the speed in an analog manner. These are situations where analog con uh, uh, logic control is used. There are another kind of situations where you are trying to design the control at a supervisory level. So, there is a whole set of sophisticated analog controllers existing and the moment you give them a command you are you know that they will be, they will realize them how they will realize is not your concern as long as you are designing at the supervisory level so because you are designing at the supervisory level your control problem is abstracted out so in that sense it is discrete even so we have seen that many such problems arise in the context of industry and we are going to in this module we are going to look take a look at how we are we will handle them so, we also tr 
defined first introduced the program programmable controller we saw its we gave it functional definition and we saw what it contains it's basically a microprocessor based device with a lot of you know interfacing capabilities and this plc programming basics we actually did not consider in this lecture and we'll be considering in the next one so you have you could do several things for example you could find a typical industrial example take a take a take a let's see for example you can have see things like i'll give you one example myself and you can think of others for example think of how to automate the uh, the, the the overhead tank in your house uh, using a using maybe some level sensors and a motor and a pump such that the water level never goes below a certain level so you are you're not you're never surprised in the kitchen so try to model the system identify its input outputs and state variables develop its finite state machine model and then finally can you draw a, we, you you can't do this now uh, but you can you can you, you, but you can perhaps figure out that what when to how based on the feedback you are going to apply the the different kinds of controls so construct an example of your own that is the assignment and that's all for today thank you very much from the next class we'll study on we'll start with the programming aspects of plcs thank you